Okay. So how is it directing Pokemon? It's great. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love directing it. I love, um, I've got an awesome cast. Uh, I get a chance to give like tons of actors who like sometimes their start in anime, which is really great. But I've been on the show so long in some way, shape, or form from being an actor in the beginning to going off. And um, One it's of my really favorites, so mm -hmm. Lena. Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, I, she got to have a little cameo in Pokemon. I was like, I saw that. I was like, wait a minute. Because yeah. I still have my VHS copies at home. Um, I might still have mine too. Because <laughs> those, I love. I love them. It was like uh, everyone said, you are a diehard fan. Because I even have the soundtracks mm -hmm. and I have everything. Yeah. And the only bad thing was I missed the last season because it's when DVDs started getting popular and mm -hmm. the VHS wasn't coming to America as much as it was. So yeah. Yeah. So I got it. I've been hunting that. Like on VHS, I want the VHS copy because the DVDs don't do it justice. I, you know, I have, I have them all, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, off of that, um, yeah. what was it like coming back to play her when, oh, when Foundation was, was redistributed? Uh, that was actually really, really, really cool. We had, um, they told us a little bit in advance that it was going to happen, and so I remember myself and Veronica Taylor, we were at a convention and we were sort of in the back, like mm -hmm. chitter-chattering, like, oh my gosh, do you really think that it's going to happen? And when we finally got into the booth, we did it over at NYAV, and we also worked, you know, for Funimation, and um, it was an awesome team who obviously knew the show really well. Uh, it was very funny because I remember I was in the booth over here, and then uh, Christian Freeman was, um, he was recording out in L.A., and we came in one night, uh, one day I was doing my, my thing and I'm doing the Dragon Slave and I have it memorized because I used to shout the Dragon Slave out in the parking lot yep. in early conventions. <laughs> <laughs> I still might, given the opportunity. Uh, but, uh, so we walked into the booth and I'm going through the Dragon Slave and I was like, this is, this is wrong. And he's like, what do you mean it's wrong? I'm like, no, this isn't, this is the Dragon Slave, the words are wrong. And he's like, what do you mean the words are wrong? I'm like, I, I have it memorized. He's like, you still have it memorized? I'm like, something <laughs> that's, into your head. That's, <laughs> what do you want? That, that's, Iconic. <laughs> yeah, but the funny thing is, is the next day after we recorded it, we got a phone call in the middle of our recording, and it's Crispin's in the booth, and he's saying the dragon slave is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yep, don't worry, we got it. We got it. Um, but it was good. Yeah, yeah. you played uh, Amy Rose, yes. uh, Tony Tony Chopper, mm -hmm. um, Serenity, mm -hmm. and Yu-Gi-Oh. So I feel like you, you're very well known for that like sort of trademark higher voice. Yeah. How did you first find that and develop that? I, uh, okay, interesting. Um, I started doing this when I was in school. I was I always watched cartoons. I always watched animation. I watched anime and Robotech and all that kind of stuff. I didn't know what it was that it was different than anything else. Mm -hmm. I just knew it was cool, and um, I used to practice along with it. So the first voice that I did was for a character called Deedlet in Record of Lotus War. And some people might, you know, kill me for that, but not now. But when I walked in, um, I did my best, like, Disney heroine voice. That, like, the thing that I had been watching all those times growing up. So that's what I did going in. And, um, and I have, you hear my voice is deep now. Mm -hmm. I also did a lot of stage, so I have that. But I do have a higher register. I am a soprano. I do go up fairly high. But um, those were sort of my, those were the voices that I made with my brothers in the car. Like on family trips, we would record like um, uh, radio plays and things like that. So that's that's what I did. That's what you did. When yeah. I, we did the same thing as so, kids too and everything. Because I grew yeah. up in the 80s, that's all you did was make like yeah. little shows and everything. Yeah. And, you know, we do with that. But that was that was my first thing. I, mm -hmm. I did that for, for Lotus. And then as we went in, they just sort of, I also watched a lot of anime. So those were voices that I was that I was sort of used to hearing. And what were your favorite animes growing up? Um, okay, well, like I said, I watched Voltron, so I was very happy when that I came back. I saw Voltron. Voltron. <laughs> uh, Voltron, we called it Robotech. Some people called it Battle of the Planets. Wow, mm -hmm. I'm totally putting myself uh, on the thing here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just, I'm an icy guy. I look really good. What about G-Force? Uh, I did watch G-Force. <laughs> well, G-Force was Battle of the Planets. Planets, yep. And, um, but I also watched, uh, I grew up watching Gem the Holograms. I grew up watching, mm. you know, G.I. Joe. I grew up watching... Then later on, I grew up watching all the others. I just kept watching them. I didn't kind of stop. Like, most people stop at, like, whatever I know, yours kind of a perfect company, because I was going to ask um, you the difference between anime and four kids, like, how the different uh, studios. Oh, yeah, let me, I'll, I yeah. just want to finish this. I also, one of the first, like, anime that I, anime that I saw was, I think, Nasuka, which was there, which was oh. really wonderful. And I used to sneak into my brother's room, because he was the anime, like, collector. And so we watched, um, that was how I first saw Crying Freeman which was a movie, nice. um, Vampire Princess Mew was another one. 
but um, that's how I got introduced to all of those and then like the Kiki's and all those things that came out after that. But those those were kind of the shows that I watched. Those were the things that I saw and I was like, this is really, really cool. It came later watching a bunch of the other stuff. So. And yeah, I mentioned Jen, right? Yeah. <laughs> what about Tenchi? And Shira. Yes, I know. Uh, Tenchi, I didn't see until much later. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, and Ronma. Yeah, you had that. Ronma one half. I remember that was the first thing. One of my first boyfriends sat me down and he was like, check this out. I was like, this is cool. (laughs) I like it because it was on channel 53 here on UHF in the the Bronx. And I literally just turned it on. I'm like, what is this? And how do I get more of it? Oh, that's good. What was the other? Yeah, about four kids question. and everything. Like so, the yes. difference between the studios versus anime versus four kids. Because I know you had to. It was it was basically anime, but it was mm-hmm. under four kids line and everything. Like the. Yeah. Well, I mean, the the thing is, is a lot of the stuff I know, like going back over there, mm-hmm. anime is, has always been anime. But four kids, a lot of people have. Sometimes they have issues with some of the things that happen. You have to remember that four kids was putting it on air for the first time in a way that hadn't been done before. And Fox had the rights to some of it, right? Well, I I don't know about the rights and all the issues, but I know that there were broadcast things that had to happen. Mm -hmm. And because there were certain things you couldn't uh, do, like famously, you couldn't say die. And you almost got Sailor Moon, because I have the commercial for that one, Mm -hmm. and you almost had Sailor Moon until it was traded out for something else and everything. Yeah, I don't don't know all the The details details of all the actual contracts, but I know that everything that we got, they had to... um, we had to make sure they were broadcast standard. We went through a lot of that, and it was about it was about putting this stuff on air in a way that it hadn't before. Because Pokemon, when when that first started, now before four kids had gotten it, yeah. uh, nobody knew what they didn't. It was treated just like a an regular animation, animation, which is which is which is in a way how it should be, how it should be. Mm-hmm. We have all this stuff that we know now, and we've been able to bring all this. We've been able to bring things culturally, but they're point of view at that time was they wanted to introduce this to a mainstream audience, make sure it was out there and translate what they were what the what was going on in in the original and making it accessible you know to a place that wasn't used to seeing that. And has any of the four kids stuff been dubbed back to the way the original like you could do it as an anime or is it still under four kids rights? There was a there was I an remember, attempt to do the uncut version that's what I was hoping yeah. for. Yeah, yeah we there, there and that's was, the last I heard. Um, I don't know what happened with any of them mm-hmm. but I do know that they were recorded. Okay. I do know that they also they did an uncut version also of the One Piece originally, but I'm sure like once it got once once yeah. it was moved over, then they didn't. Um, they were gonna air that, but yeah, they did they did try to do that and they did look to do that kind of stuff. Because a lot of Definitely. fans like when they were collecting the series, that's right. When I worked at Suncoast, they would say like it was hard because the episodes they wanted, four kids had picked those and they couldn't get the full ones and everything. Yeah, I don't know the in depth. I don't yeah. know that much in depth. I kind of know from the actor perspective of what I've known from people there. Yes. Well, kind of uh, building off of that, the difference is you've been a veteran in the industry, both acting and directing for such a long time. What's it like seeing the industry grow and change from way back in the late 90s, early 2000s mm-hmm. to today? It's trippy. <laughs> it's trippy. Um, we, and at East Coaster, it's a little trippier, too, because, you know, we stayed over here at Poké. We kind of have kept our head, like, doing all the stuff over here. And, but um, all my friends who I came up with, like, all the funny crew, all the DBZ people, like, watching that sort of, like, blow up. And the fact that, like, you cannot go anywhere right now and you can't go anywhere without seeing either Dragon Ball or seeing Pokemon somewhere. Mm-hmm. Or now I know my hero has, like, blown up very much. And um, it's also, when we first started doing conventions, it was, it was a smaller group of people Maybe people who had not been, you know, not been out, but were like, like looking at this niche thing, and um, it wasn't. And forgive the word that I'm gonna say, it's like, like we didn't have as much. You were just doing the things you we didn't have. Like now, there's like a nerd cool vibe that's like perfect between this and Marvel. Yeah, so the you know what I mean? That just to popped be into... up. Yeah, and which I'm very happy for because yeah. that's just what we were doing anyway. Mm-hmm. But um, for me, like seeing also the people, there was always people in the beginning. I remember having the first convention that I went to, and there were original one of one of the first ones. One of the I'm first. trying to remember which one because I know it was this rare. was one in this was one that I went to in Canada. That it's okay, because yeah, mostly Canada ones. did have the first. And yeah. the original Sailor Moon cast was over there. They had nothing, you know. They, they did. They had this whole big thing, and I just sort of showed up. Um, they, uh, oh, I forget the artist now who drew me. He actually drew me like a manga picture of Lena in verse. He drew a poster for me, so I had something. And um, 
I'm in mean, awe right now. Yeah, it, like, it, it was it was amazing. And I just sort of grabbed a bunch of chairs and like sat mm -hmm. in around in a circle. And I remember talking to a lot of a lot of the other people who are now like we're doing. Like, I had dinner with um, with Michael Tate on yesterday, and we're talking about just like how from when we started, we were just sort of like running around, and now it's sort of just blown up. There's so many more people. Mm -hmm. So many more people know it, the popularity is insane. There's the ability to there's the ability to tell these stories as close to how they were, how they're told in Japan, and, you know, mm -hmm. be able to do that. There's better, there's better teams of actors who are working on them, as far as, like, there's more people coming specifically to do that. There's a lot of times in the beginning it was, there's a whole better technique for recording, for um, watching things. Because it was real to real, stuff, right, for, back then. There, mm -hmm. There's people that are, in the beginning it was people sort of editing and doing things as they flew along, and now there's people who specifically now have been adapting and doing doing scripts for years and years. There's a method, there's a, there's, there's a thing, and there's, you know, there's a whole system that we didn't have before. But as far as the, um, the fan base, which is really cool, it always started as sort of this, um, a group of people who were just wanting to like do the things that they loved, and I love that it's grown into this like huge thing, very accepting, very cool, like very, very sort of loving environment for the, you know, the most part. Yeah. How would you compare the the technical aspect of everything compared to? And my friend wanted me to bring this up particularly, mm -hmm. um, his and her circumstances. Ah, okay. All the way to <laughs> you recently just. Re reprise a role for Sound Cadence. Yes, I did. Year. Oh, yes, that was so much fun. Yes, yeah. I did. I got to do uh, Maytel, which will be coming out soon, which is good in uh, in Galaxy So um, that's my favorite. Yeah, it was. I I love. You don't understand how much I'm like sitting here. I'm like trying to because I want to hug you because all the anime I was made fun of as a kid because my uncle had to, mm -hmm. and it was like. You seeing someone like you actually and hearing about the conventions and everything, I always wanted to go, but I was so little. Like, and you, I mean, we were the same age, but like because my mom was always saying it was just cartoons. It was just as my uncle tried to bring me to one in the city that people were at, and it, it just I wanted so bad because I wanted to be in the industry too and everything because I wanted to say okay I can do that and everything that girls can do this guys don't have to be. Well, that that yeah. was that was a huge thing for me also. Like I said. Well, but like you were yeah. talking about, like a lot of people came here, and this was the first time. Like, it, like I was when I started. I'm like, eh, who am I? I'm like, I'm just a person who's doing this voice going over here. People were excited to meet, and so I tried to make a point of, you know, being able to talk to everybody sitting down and like making because I knew that this. I didn't understand until once, and then I'm going to come back to your question, which is crazy because I just Sorry. dropped off the okay. But um, I remember doing a convention in Texas. This was like over 10 years ago. Ago, and it was mostly like a military base operation. And I remember there was a big, um, there was a big, uh, I think this is actually, actually I'm going to go back, I think this was like during Desert Storms, this was a while ago. And I had people who were in the military who were coming up to me and one guy gave me his coin, which I don't know if you guys know about that, but yeah, like there's a, you, you get for your, for your, for your thing. So he gave me his coin, he's like, watching you guys and watching this was for Slayers, he's like, watching this while I was out in the field, he's like, that got me through. Mm -hmm. And um, you don't know, I'm being weird, I also didn't get a lot of sleep, so work with me. You don't know how you, you touch people's lives, and that's the thing. Mm -hmm. And um, like that's something that I take seriously, and I take into Pokemon, and I take into like everything that I come over here. Um, what was the question about dubbing now that I'm a little <laughs> I have very bad allergies, people. Very bad allergies. No, you're good. It's, it's no. okay. I just wanted to, like, going back to Sound Cadence and recording yes. for an old role, what was it like being like, Wow, like you said, because so much has changed. Yeah. Was there a moment where you're like, wow, things are really different from how they, from when I first recorded this? Did well, they give you any direction well, or? Well, um, yes and no. The thing is, by the time I had recorded on that project, by the time I had done Metal in in the ones that I had done, we were in a booth. We were doing all that, so we had started already creating the process of that. Since I was just coming in now as an actor, as opposed to the, um, I wasn't directing. I wasn't working with any of that stuff. Um, since I was just coming in as an actor, it was, for me, it was process, it was a little streamlined, it was great working with them, you know, I mean, it was really wonderful, and the the booth had disco lights, that was really nice. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, I kept asking her to change them, <laughs> so we had different colors. Um, but uh, it was, it, it was, since, it might be different for somebody who had just, who had stepped away and then come back, mm -hmm. because I have been in the industry sort of this whole time, so it, I've, I've been like transitioning with it. 
So I'm sort of used to where everything is now. It's definitely quicker, it's very easier. Like we have this script on the wall at this point. Some places still use paper, various things like that. But, um, but coming back into it, I watched some of what we had done before. You know, had some references of that. And um, I know she had a really great understanding of what the show was and, and where it was. So we got to take a lot of time. And I think that that's one of the things also is that there's a, and this is, and I say this with a caveat, there's the ability now people will take things and have time to do things if they need it. They'll take the time and do all that stuff. And we've always done that. It's always been, I've been lucky to sort of have been on the crest of the wave of when they started bringing in a lot of talent, people who had been coming in. So we've always been trying to do the best work that we can in there. But, um, but yeah, it's real trippy when you walk into the studio after a really long time to pick somebody up and you wanna like, you know, you wanna do the justice to that. So she was very cool about making sure that we hit, we hit the right moments and we got a really great balance on that. I, I have a yeah. Pokemon related question. So you've played like okay. dozens of like characters of a day yes. and dozens of different Pokemon. Mm -hmm. What would you say were your favorite roles to play or the ones that resonated the most with you over the course of the series? Uh, that's hard to say. Um, but uh, that's hard to say, but I will. Um, <laughs> the, uh, I love, so I'll always go back to other things. I always love Sabrina because we had, not just because she had her psychic Pokemon, but she was kind of a little bit like edgier on things that she did. So I liked that. That was a scary episode. <laughs> it was a scary, right? Well, listen, okay. I loved it. it, it I, I loved it too. I was a little gothy girl, so I was a little emo on my side. I loved it. I was just great. I'm like, I got to do this. And uh, so it wasn't scary for me. But, um, but it was kind of scary. She was a little scary. I loved her. Um, trainers, uh, there's been a bunch, like I did, Flannery, but I also love Karina recently, and XY is just very me, sort of like running around, falling around, skating, like I also did that, so I was like, so I love her. Trying but, to get a dog to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly, very much me. Um, but, uh, okay, Pokemon, of course, Oshawott. As much as I love Lytton, Lytton is fantastic, it's grumpy, does all that, Torica. And um, it is fantastic, Lytton. Um, and uh, and Oshawott, I love. The Oshawott was the first big Pokemon that I did that was a starter. And I remember being scared when I went in. I was like, what am I gonna do? Because all I can do is say my name. I'm like, am I gonna be able to do this? <laughs> and it turned out to be one of the most fun things that I had ever done. Because you had all this unlimited freedom. And um, I don't know if you know, but Oshawa is partially based on Jimmy Durante. Oh. You know? I was yeah. figuring that one because yeah. I was like, <laughs> is it the 